This is a picture of friendship. A picture where NASA, Russian and European astronauts are seen happily and peacefully sharing the International Space Station. Now it seems unlikely that we will see such a picture again in the near future. With the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the space industry is inevitably seeing some changes, especially for Russia. Even though NASA tries to keep things as calm as possible, so as to keep working with all its international partners, including the Russian Space Agency, changes seem almost inevitable. We've already seen several measures or steps taken by the Russian government to cut ties with the West in terms of space relations, such as withdrawing Russian personnel from Europe's spaceport in French Guinea, plus suspending any Soyuz launches there, or the more recent termination of US involvement in the Venera D mission to Venus, which was scheduled for 2029, and now nobody knows if it's going to be ever finished. And perhaps the most remarkable piece of commentary coming from Russia on the matter of space collaboration was a series of tweets made by the head of the Russian Space Agency concerning the future and fate of the International Space Station, where he basically stated that without the Russian module, and the necessary thrust that they provide, the ISS would end up deorbiting, possibly crashing onto the US, Europe, or even India or China. Russia provides the propellant and thrusters needed to periodically reboost the ISS and keep it orbiting around the Earth, while NASA provides most of the electrical power and the stability needed to maintain the right orientation. And this is why the head of Roscosmos asked who was going to save the ISS if the US stopped cooperating with Russia, a question to which Elon Musk responded to many unsurprisingly with SpaceX. Now this has led to many interesting conversations about the US becoming totally independent of Russia when it comes to running the ISS and whether SpaceX with its Dragon capsule and Northrop Grumman with their Cygnus capsule could make it possible. As for the Dragon capsule, the main problem right now is that its main Draco engines face the wrong way when the capsule is docked to the ISS, so SpaceX would need to modify them in order to make it work, a process that, as fast as SpaceX might be, it still would probably take some months to complete. It would be interesting to see how SpaceX handles these changes since besides functioning as a propulsion system for the ISS, it would also need to constantly have enough fuel left to function as a lifeboat as well. Perhaps a good option would be to attach a standalone engine with its own fuel depot that could be fitted within the trunk of Dragon, although I don't know how much that extra hardware and mass would impact the overall design of the Dragon capsule. I guess we'll have to wait and see how SpaceX decides to do it. Alternatively to SpaceX, the other option would be the Cygnus spacecraft, which belongs to Northrop Grumman. This one could even be slightly easier to use because it is only used for cargo, so it wouldn't need that extra propellant to act as a lifeboat, and its engines wouldn't need to be redesigned as is the case with Dragon to provide the ISS with the reboost needed. In order to add more options, the Cygnus spacecraft could also be designed to dock to the ISS rather than Earth. This option would still have the problem of only being launchable with either Atlas V or Antares, and both launch systems use Russian engines, so maybe it would be a good idea to make some changes so that the Cygnus spacecraft can be launched using a Falcon 9 rocket, at least until the B-4 engines from Blue Origin and the new Vulcan Center rocket are ready to fly. Be it as it may, it seems that NASA could very well handle a scenario where the Russian module is no longer there thanks to its domestic aviation and aeronautics industry. However, the same cannot be said for the Russian Space Agency and its presence in low Earth orbit, since if the Russian module were to be undocked from the ISS, it wouldn't be able to generate enough power to support itself. Since it is the NASA module that has the solar arrays to provide the energy needed, it's definitely not easy to predict what is going to happen aboard the ISS in low Earth orbit. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine seems to be getting more and more bitter with every passing day, a conflict that also makes me anxious, but I'm happy to be able to do these videos and keep myself distracted with more positive people and things. Thanks for watching again, and I will see you in the next one very soon. Take care. Bye bye.